In this lecture, we're going to go ahead and talk about how radiation is altered. When we go from a short wave to a long wave, something happens in between that changes that radiation from a very short wave or very powerful wave to a very um, uh, long wave or a subtle wave. Okay? So we have to have a process, and that process is absorption. Energy is absorbed, therefore it is changed. And so if we go from short wave to long wave, we must have absorption. Okay, by way of absorption. So in other words, in order to get this short wave to change, to become less powerful, it's got to be absorbed. Some of it's got to be absorbed. Okay, so how does this work? Well, let's use something that we, we know of uh, in our daily life. Okay, you have two basketball players, and one has the ball and tosses the ball to the other individual without it bouncing or touching the ground. This is shortwave. Okay, it's still powerful. It is unchanged. It did not touch the ground. It did not uh, get absorbed by anything. All right? It just goes from one person to the next without any uh, stopping or bouncing. Okay? So that's shortwave. Now let's change this. We'll change this now to where we do allow, allow the ball to bounce. It bounces. All right? Some of the energy goes through the floor or through the ground. That energy is then absorbed. Okay? And then that ball then bounces to the other individual. Okay? So the point of absorption is where that ball hits the ground. And the ground then absorbs that energy. Then the energy is changed. So we get, for this first part, we get shortwave radiation, and then for the second part, when it goes at, when it bounces after the floor, then we get long wave radiation. Okay. Now let's see what happens if the individual has no other friend to play with. How sad! How sad! We can see what happens to energy over time if nothing is there to catch it. Okay. So we have an individual who has no friends and wants to play ball. Well, what happens is the individual throws the ball, energy gets absorbed on that first bounce, and then what happens? The next bounce and height of that ball is shorter. So we're dealing with distance here, it gets shorter, and it gets shorter in, in height too. And so then more energy is absorbed. Every time I draw a circle here, this is energy being absorbed. And so we continue to go smaller, smaller, until the ball rolls to the side. Okay, continues to roll where there's no more bounce. Well, this is what happens. Once you shut off the energy, all that energy that started out as a short wave, this is short wave, and each segment here is long wave, but it's decreased energy. It's decreased long wave energy. Okay, so we can give me long wave, long wave, and little tiny long waves. Okay, all the way till there is nothing, no energy left. Okay, so that's how we can alter radiation. We go from short wave to long wave via absorption. The key word here is absorption. Now, let's quickly talk about how this works with a greenhouse model. With a greenhouse model. We have a greenhouse, and then we have solar radiation. Solar radiation comes in as shortwave radiation. We will call this now insulation. Insolation. Insolation. Insolation, not insolation or insolence, it's insolation. It comes in, the shortwave radiation comes into the greenhouse unchanged. It's powerful, it passed through the glass. Okay? And then it gets absorbed. 
absorbed radiation. The next step is then long wave radiation. So it emits heat. Long wave radiation is essentially heat. The byproduct of used energy is heat. And so over time, it gets smaller and smaller. All right, now, now this is a cycle. So we get insulation, absorption, long wave radiation, and then dissipation over time. For example, if we were to close this greenhouse, completely make it dark during the day, and then all of a sudden, we open up everything and then shut it again for a millisecond, we would see a temperature spike, just a little tiny one. That, sh that indicates that we had some energy get absorbed. So again, if we opened up the greenhouse for a split second, we would go through insulation, absorption, long wave radiation, dissipation. So it's just like this basketball player throwing the ball and getting to the point where it bounces, bounces, bounces until it rolls. So that is what happens with the green house model. Okay, the greenhouse model. And this is essentially what's happening with the greenhouse effect. But when we have sunlight during the day, it is continuous. We keep building that energy up in the atmosphere. All right. So then what we've got again is we get a, a cycle, the radiation cycle. And let's go ahead and go through that. We've drawn it. Now let's go with point by point. We'll go point by point. The radiation cycle. And that is insulation must happen first. And then you get absorption. And then you get long wave radiation. And then it dissipates. So we get this, and it goes over and over and over uh, as, uh, as long as the sun or the energy is still there. The insulation, the short wave radiation is still there. So we get insulation, absorption, long wave radiation, and then dissipation. Dissipates, uh, the energy dissipates, dissipation. Okay? So that again is the radiation cycle. Now, the opposite of this is albedo. We have absorption and we have albedo. Albedo is the reflectance value of an object. Albedo is the reflectance value of an object. How, uh, how grand or how, how much, radiate, uh, how much um, uh, energy is reflected off an object? Uh, object? How much sunlight is reflected off an object? How much uh, uh, an object can uh, absorb is the opposite of albedo. Okay, so albedo is the reflectance value of an object. Let's give you an example here. A, uh, a, a snow, snowfall, has a high albedo. Snow has a high albedo. When you're walking out in the, in the snow at winter, but it's a clear day, a clear sunny day, what do you usually wear? You wear, you wear sunglasses because the snow, you're walking and the snow is blinding because the solar radiation is bouncing off of the snow because of high albedo into your eyes. All right, so it has a high reflectance value. On the other side of that, if you have asphalt, asphalt is, is, is black, it's a black top. And so what happens is it has a low albedo. And the low albedo means that there is more absorption of energy, okay? So we can associate albedo, the, the quality of albedo, with temperature. Snow, high albedo, results in low temperatures, okay? And then if we look at the asphalt, asphalt is a low albedo surface, therefore we have a high temperature. So what we get here is that temperature is the result of how much radiation is being absorbed. So you have a high albedo, you, the, if you have ice, 
Uh, and then because the ice is cold, does it make it cold? It's the, the, uh, the ability for radiation to be absorbed, okay? So with snow or ice, it has a high albedo. It reflects most of that radiation back into the atmosphere, okay? Whereas asphalt or soil or trees, dark surfaces, dark surfaces have a low albedo. Therefore, the temperature will be hot. More energy is being emitted as a long wave radiation. So this is a significant aspect of how radiation is altered. Here is low alteration of energy. Here is high alteration of energy. Both of these allow insulation to be either reflected or used up.